So we are at one of my favorite UK public gardens. This is the Annick Garden. When I first came here, I thought it was called the Alnwick Garden. Say it as you see it. Uh, one of the, 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 the areas of this garden that it's most famous for, and I remember uh, being most entertained and intrigued by this aspect of the garden last time I came, is the Poison Garden. And they have a section that's all about plants that can kill you. Let's go and have a look. This is the laburnum tree. Now, as you can see, it's covered in beautiful yellow blossom known as golden chain. Unfortunately, this blossom's already started to turn into something that looks remarkably similar to a pea pod. In fact, it's a member of the pea family. Three to four of these pods are enough to kill a child. So this is called Ruta graviolens. The common name is Rue, spelled R-U-E. You can dry those green leaves and use them as a herb in your cooking if you're brave enough after what I'm about to tell you. <laughs> if something's broken the leaves and the sap is laying on the surface and you brush against it, you will receive third degree burns. The pictures I'm about to show you, I'd like to warn you first that some people find them a little bit upsetting. If you don't want to see them, this is your opportunity to turn away. Everybody okay with this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> first picture I'm going to show you is what it does to a child. Oops. This next one is the one that disturbs me the most. This is called Chelidonium magus, also known as Greater Salandine. The common name for it is wartwort, on account of what they did with it in the Middle Ages. The plant produces a yellow sap, and if this comes in contact with your skin, it also burns like crazy. Now, in this instance, they used it to treat a wart, so they put a small amount of the sap onto the water and leave it there for about 20 minutes. This was the most painful 20 minutes of your life. Oh. And then they wash it off, and you're left with a blister. The blister heals into a scab, the scab falls off, and you're left with perfectly healthy skin underneath. It completely eradicates the wart virus. Very, very painful, but very effective. The exact same methodology that I've just described to you was also used in the Middle Ages to treat, wait for it, hemorrhoids. <laughs> <laughs> These plants were used by the ancient Greeks two and a half thousand years ago as an early form of chemical warfare. When they were sieging a town or a city and they needed to weaken the defenders, it's sneak in late at night when no one's watching, place one of the plants, roots and all, into the town's well. As the defenders then drink the water, they become weaker, easier to conquer. How sneaky is that? I'd now like to introduce you to what is considered to be the world's most poisonous plant according to the Guinness Book of World Records. That is Ricinus communis, commonly known as the castor bean or castor oil plant. We get castor oil safely from this plant by floating the beans in water. Oil is lighter than water, so it rises to the top. They skim it and treat it with heat to kill any residual poison. The poison is located in the husk of the bean. One bean is capable of yielding 4% ricin. That's the most deadly substance we know of from a plant. To put it in context, ricin is 6,000 times more potent than cyanide. One bean is capable of killing dozens of people. It was used in the murder of Georgie Markov. That's been known as the Umbrella Murder. Georgie Markov in the 1970s was a Bulgarian dissident who had defected from the then Soviet Union. He came to work for the BBC World Service where he said many things that upset powerful people. It's thought that a member of the Bulgarian secret police was dispatched with a modified umbrella that was capable of firing a micro-engineered pellet. The pellet contained ricin. In September 1978, Georgi Markov is walking on his normal route to work when he passes over London's Waterloo Bridge. That's where he's shot in the leg. He presented himself to hospital, but there was nothing they could do for him. 
this isn't something you expect to hear about in a real life situation something you expect to be watching in a James Bond movie on a brighter note if you was a bride in Madeira your mother would give you four castor beans before you was about to get married just in case the husband doesn't work out <laughs> The biggest killer killer plant in the world, uh, Nicotiana, and that's the tobacco plant. And uh, another banned plant in the UK behind there, the infamous cannabis. So thanks for that too. Very, very interesting. Entertaining as well. Uh, you mentioned something there that actually some of these plants, although they might have toxins in, there's a fine line between actually using them for medicine or the, the detrimental effects. Could you... right. There's a very fine line between being able to kill you and cure you. Now, a good example of that would be a plant called um, Meadow Sweet. It contains a substance called salicylic acid, which is nature's version of aspirin. Small doses are beneficial for pain relief. Yeah larger doses will thin your blood and cause you to bleed internally. Wow. The definition of poison could be said to be dose. Yes, thank you very much.